Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us. This is News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Let's take a look at our top headlines today. Residents in central and western Nebraska being told to prepare for scenes like this. Over the next day or so, the National Weather Service issuing blizzard warnings for 31 counties through Tuesday afternoon. Forecasters say there will be multiple rounds of varying weather. The system could create severe thunderstorms in southern and southeast Nebraska with rain changing over to snow. How much? Well, the National Weather Service says up to 15 inches of snow could be possible throughout central Nebraska. As if that weren't enough, winds are expected to gust to between 55 and 60 miles per hour at times, reducing visibility to near zero and potentially causing damage. All this after a similar system dropped up to 19 inches of snow in and around North Platte just three weeks ago. The accumulating snow expected in almost all corners of the state outside the blizzard warning as well with winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories issued in dozens of other counties. And those blizzard conditions shutting down highways in central Nebraska Monday morning. The Nebraska Department of Transportation shutting down both Interstate 80 and U.S. Highway 30 in both directions between Lexington and Ogallala. That's a stretch of over 110 miles. And DOT says visibility is the biggest issue when highways throughout central and northeast Nebraska are considered completely covered by snow. Blizzard warnings in effect for over 30 counties through Tuesday afternoon. In advance of the blizzard, the city of North Platte declared a snow emergency Sunday evening. City officials were requesting that people remove their vehicles from snow routes. Dozens of schools announced there would be no class on Monday, a week that's already shortened by the Easter break. The weather being blamed for a power outage in northeast Nebraska that affected thousands early Monday morning. The Elkhorn Rural Public Power District reported a transmission line from Norfolk into Antelope County was out caused about 2,500 services to be without power, affecting Madison County from Tilden to Newman Grove and up into Pierce County. Crews had been dispatched with some services in Tilden being restored before 9 a.m. There was no estimate, though, when power would be fully restored. In other news this morning, the state fire marshal investigating a blaze northeast of Ainsworth that destroyed a house and killed a family pet. Ainsworth's fire chief says the house was engulfed in flames when firefighters arrived at the scene Saturday evening. The house located over six miles northeast of Ainsworth. No one was in the house at the time, but a dog in the garage perished. In international news, Israel and Hamas could soon swap hostages and prisoners. Details beginning to emerge about the U.S. exchange proposal. Israel's agreed to it. Now the ball is in Hamas's court. Amy Kiley has the latest. Whether Hamas will say yes, will it say no, or will it say yes but? Israel is waiting for Hamas to respond after agreeing to a U.S. prisoner exchange proposal. It includes 40 Israeli hostages and around 700 Palestinian prisoners. Among them are 100 Palestinians serving life sentences for killing Israeli nationals. And the Israelis want to have a veto on the identity of those prisoners. The CNN analyst who helped break the news predicts some Americans could go free in the exchange. He says it could take a couple of days for Hamas negotiators to pass on a response from their leader. This is Hamas leader Yihya Sinwar in Gaza, who is in a bunker some 100 feet under the ground. The news comes the same week that Israeli officials are visiting Washington. Today, the defense minister is in town. Later this week, a different delegation is set to discuss the southern Gaza city of Rafah. The humanitarian crisis there is sparking outrage. There is no targeting of Hamas in precipitating a mass famine of a million people, half of whom are children. Israel is planning a ground invasion in Rafah. Vice President Kamala Harris warns that could result in consequences from the U.S. American officials are worried about the more than a million civilians living there. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, it took two hours past the deadline, but a partial government shutdown was avoided. Now, some say they're unhappy with the $1.2 trillion spending package signed by President Joe Biden. Rob Kirkpatrick has more. 
Just two hours after the midnight deadline, Congress passed a funding bill to avoid a government shutdown. This funding agreement between the White House and congressional leaders is good news that comes in the nick of time. When passed, it will extinguish any more shutdown threats for the rest of the fiscal year. President Joe Biden signed the legislation Saturday and praised the bipartisan bill, calling it, quote, good news for the American people. The $1.2 trillion funding bill addresses a slate of critical government operations, including the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Labor, and the Legislative Branch. This is a good result for the American people. In terms of standing up for their health, their safety, their education, their national security protection, and of course, above all else, their economic well-being. But the fight is far from over, as hardline conservatives signaled an unwillingness to approve the legislation. It's a bad day for the country, for anybody that votes for this. They're funding this, uh, killing this country. The agreement could also cost Republican Mike Johnson his job as House Speaker. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene on Friday filed a motion to vacate him as House Speaker. I filed the motion to vacate today, but it's more of a warning and a pink slip. This was our leverage. This is our chance to secure the border, and he didn't do it. Green's resolution to oust Johnson will hang over the GOP conference as the House begins a two-week recess. I'm Rob Kirkpatrick reporting. The Biden administration, meanwhile, spending $6 billion to slash planet warming pollution from heavy industries, including cement, steel and aluminum. The funding will go to more than 30 factories around the country who are taking steps to cut about 14 million metric tons of carbon dioxide annually. No Nebraska businesses were among the recipients. The funding comes from a combination of the Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. An early childhood conference held in northeast Nebraska aims to strengthen relationships between teachers and parents in the community. The early childhood conference held in Hardington, Cedar County communities, giving teachers and parents a chance to work with each other in the field to elevate early care and education. Among those, Mace Nord Hughes, who said she wants to bring more back to her classroom and learn ways to support kids in her classroom. We do have a lot of kids in our community that we don't see that with where maybe we can grow from them and add more support to their lives if they're not seeking it, seeking it or getting it outside of there. Organizers of the event say their mission is to collaborate with teachers and parents to ensure every child in Cedar County has access to quality childhood environments. The conference planned to be an annual event hoping to engage professionals in the field with other professionals. A much-loved annual car show held this past weekend at the Sunset Plaza Mall in Norfolk. Before the racing season begins, drivers got a chance to show off their rides to the public. A former mall employee and current owner of Family Vending, Mark Benedict, took steps to get the show back out for the public to enjoy. We were happy this year to be able to work with the Sunset Plaza to bring this car show back here so everybody could enjoy it from the, the racers to the car owners to the fans to hopefully new fans and just the people that are shopping here. Kind of gives everyone uh, kind of something different to see that they don't normally see. People were able to cast their vote for their favorite car. The awards were given out at the end of the event on Sunday. Well, nobody won Saturday night's Powerball. That means the jackpot, now $800 million. There may not have been a jackpot winner, but at least five people won a million dollars. The next Powerball drawing is Monday. Nobody won the Mega Millions on Friday either. That jackpot, now up to more than $1 billion. And after spending the last 26 years walking for cancer awareness, a Marine veteran finished his walk in Nebraska. On Saturday, Jim Hickey, a 62-year-old veteran from New Jersey. His walk across Nebraska started in Cozad for a girl named Patience Hansen, who was diagnosed with a form of cancer in her brain five years ago. Well, after making the 500-mile journey across the state, Hickey was glad the journey was done. I uh, just made it. Uh, it was to get to Children's Hospital to raise awareness for patients and for childhood cancer in general, and uh, to, to get involved and help find a cure for childhood cancer. Hickey was not alone on Saturday. After walking the beginning mile in Cozad, Patients' family joined Hickey in Omaha for the last mile of the walk. Hickey is himself battling kidney and bladder cancer, and 
Patience's mother, Tara Meyer, said Hickey is a part of their family. He's, you know, headed back into the, you know, surgery here pretty soon again to complete his surgery. So to kind of fit into his schedule, is, it's good. It's nice. And, you know, it's kind of part of our family now after years. Hickey was escorted in his walk in Omaha by the fire department before ending at the Children's Hospital. After finishing his walk, Hickey will now have surgery and undergo further treatment for his cancer. You can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Head to newschannelnebraska.com. Click on the News tab there. You can also follow us on X, like us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.